The CEO of NVIDIA is back with more comments on Chinese AI, and he says that they are catching up and fast. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. One of the recurring themes on this show is, of course, the geopolitical competition around AI. AI is very clearly not just a technology movement. It is also not just a business consideration. It is right at the heart of geopolitical competition, obviously with China and the U.S. at the center of that. Today, we kind of have a grab bag of stories that all relate to that in some way, and we're kicking it off with comments from NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang. Now, it is earnings season, and so this is always a time of the quarter when we have a little bit more commentary from big leaders. And Jensen recently has been using every chance that he's gotten to beat this drum of China's increased competition. Speaking with Bloomberg, he said, The Chinese competitors have evolved. Like everybody else, they are doubling, quadrupling capabilities every year, and the volume is increasing substantially. Now, one of the companies that Huang is referring to is Huawei, who are testing a chip that's roughly equivalent to NVIDIA's previous generation flagship, the H100. Mobile company Xiaomi also recently announced their first proprietary chip in eight years, which was manufactured using second generation three nanometer architecture. This would be the first time a Chinese firm has mass manufactured a three nanometer chip, which even if that doesn't mean anything to you, the key point is that it achieves parity with the technology that's used to create NVIDIA's leading chips. Still, rather than heed Jensen's warning that export controls were a failure, the new administration is extending controls in a different direction. Bloomberg reports that the Commerce Department has written to firms that provide chip design software to halt supply to China. And from Commerce Department spokespeople, it sounds like this is part of just a broader review of how every part of this ecosystem interacts with China in some way. Now, one of the big areas of dispute or questions whenever Jensen Huang talks about China is how much he truly believes the export controls are pointless or if he's merely speaking out of self-interest. China was one of the company's largest markets even with chip controls in place. In their earnings report on Wednesday night, NVIDIA disclosed that the ban on H20 units will cost the company $8 billion in revenue during Q2. That's around a 15% hit on their revenue projection of $45 billion. It's also up from when the ban was first announced in April when NVIDIA believed that they would only lose out on $5.5 billion in revenue for the quarter. On the earnings call, Jensen said, China is one of the world's largest AI markets and a springboard to global success with half of the world's AI researchers based there. The platform that wins China is positioned to lead globally today. However, the $50 billion China market is effectively closed to us. The H20 export ban ended our Hopper data center business in China. We cannot reduce Hopper further to comply. Taiwanese tech publication DigiTimes reported that both NVIDIA and AMD now have new downrated chips in the manufacturing pipeline to comply with adjusted export controls. NVIDIA's chips will be based on the Blackwell architecture and will be named the B20, and Reuters reported that the new chip will be available at around a third of the cost of the H20. DigiTimes added that both companies are expected to begin sale of these chips into China from July. Still, one of the reasons to think that this isn't just self-interest is that NVIDIA is doing quite well from the rollout of their new Blackwell chips everywhere outside of China. Sales for the first quarter were up 69% compared to the previous year and beat expectations. Huang's statement said, global demand for NVIDIA's AI infrastructure is incredibly strong. Now, the stock was up about 3% following earnings, so Wall Street clearly isn't too concerned about the loss of the Chinese market as long as the rest of the world is still buying. Still, Huang restated his position on export controls for investors during the earnings call, commenting, the question is not whether China will have AI. It already does. The question is whether one of the world's largest AI markets will run on American platforms. Shielding Chinese chipmakers from U.S. competition only strengthens them abroad and weakens America's position. Now, part of the reason that the whole discussion of China has increased over the last six months is, of course, DeepSeek. When DeepSeek came out with models that could compare to the top American models that were theoretically trained at a fraction of the cost, and when they then released those reasoning models into a free public application that got tons and tons of consumer downloads, everyone sat up and took notice. Well, that company has now released an updated version of their R1 reasoning model. The model was posted to Hugging Face on Wednesday, along with an announcement from the company on WeChat. The announcement said that this was a minor upgrade, but didn't provide a description of the changes or significant technical notes. Model cards and benchmarks were added on Thursday, with DeepSeek claiming model performance approaching that of the leading closed reasoning models, OpenAI's O3 and Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro. It's a big step up from the original version of R1, but there is a question of whether this is a significant improvement on the previous open source leader, Quen's QWQ. Importantly, for those who thought that Chinese labs were going to start pulling ahead and actually being state-of-the-art, this would suggest instead that we're still in a paradigm where those Chinese labs are capable of keeping up with the leaders of the U.S. in a few months lag, but are not yet able to pull ahead. Overall, in the four months since R1 was first released, 
App downloads have fallen by about 75% from their peak in February. As of April, which is the latest month for which I could find numbers, DeepSeek seemed to have around 96 million monthly active users, which would be around triple of the amount from January. Around a third of those are in China with significant user bases in India and Indonesia as well. The latest upgrade is the top trending model on Hugging Face, but it's not significantly ahead of Mistral's new developer model or Google's Gemma small model. Rather than a handoff from US to Chinese labs then, the DeepSeek moment in retrospect seems more like a wake-up call. As I mentioned before, it was the first reasoning model available for free, which allowed it to wow casual AI users. Since then, Anthropic, Google, and OpenAI have all made reasoning models available in their free tiers. And when it comes to the policy response, it's even more confused. Professor Ethan Malik had interesting comments on this. He said, given that the US, China, and Europe are all players in frontier open weights models, I am not sure what it means for a nation to win an AI. Unless you're positing a takeoff scenario where one closed weights AI dominates everything else, won't open models diffuse worldwide? Is the idea that models will go closed as soon as they reach some AGI-ish level and be restricted in use? If so, wouldn't the other national models catch up a few months later? I don't actually think many people in policy believe in a takeoff scenario for what it's worth. And if you believe that the competition over AI is motivated by a sincere belief in takeoff, the lack of any other policies that would suggest preparation for rapid increases in AI ability to superhuman level are somewhat confusing. Now, the other area of the world that is key in the geostrategic story of AI is the Middle East, the figurative, geographic, and otherwise middle between the US and China. One psychodrama story out of that region, Elon Musk's feud with Sam Altman, continues to fester with the Wall Street Journal reporting that Musk tried to derail a deal to build a gigantic data center in the UAE if XAI wasn't included. Last week, OpenAI led a consortium of U.S. tech companies to partner with UAE firm G42 on a one-gigawatt supercluster in Abu Dhabi, known as Stargate UAE. Sources told the journal that on a group call with G42 officials, Musk warned that their plan had no chance of President Trump signing off on it unless XAI was included in the deal. Just before the president's tour of Gulf states, Musk learned that Altman would be on the trip and that a UAE deal was in the works. White House sources said he became angry about it, complained about the administration treating all AI companies fairly, and invited himself to also join the trip. Musk ultimately appeared alongside the president in Saudi Arabia with Altman, but didn't continue on to the UAE. Still, after Musk's complaints, Trump and other admin officials reviewed the deal terms and decided to move forward. White House sources said that Musk was opposed to a deal that would seem to benefit Altman, but he seems to have not had as much sway over decision-making as he had thought. The journal writes, Aides discussed how to best calm Musk down because Trump and David Sachs wanted to announce the deal before the end of the president's trip to the Middle East. These behind-the-scenes details seem to give some additional context on Musk's recent decision to step back from politics and his exit from the administration. Reporting suggests that Musk had fallen out of favor with power brokers. Reuters stated his departure was quick and unceremonious. He did not have a formal conversation with Trump before announcing his exit according to a source with knowledge of the matter who added that his departure was decided at a senior staff level. Still beyond the Elon story, the Wall Street Journal report also included previously unknown details about the OpenAI-led deal with the UAE. They wrote that UAE officials had been lobbying the administration for months to gain access to a ton of AI chips and were willing to spend heavily to get them. G42 has reportedly agreed to pay all costs for the data center's construction, as well as pledging to fund a similar-sized project in the U.S., the initial 1 gigawatt of AI computing power is just the start of the planned 5 gigawatts to be installed in total at the site. The plan is to make the facility available to host infrastructure for various U.S. companies, and XAI is viewed as a likely candidate for future sites at the sprawling data center hub. They're on the shortlist of companies with conditional approval to buy some of the 500,000 chips annually permitted to be exported to the UAE. And one more from the Gulf region. Saudi Arabia's new state-owned AI company, Humane, is set to launch a $10 billion venture fund to pair with their aggressive data center strategy. The Financial Times reports that the fund will invest in startups across the U.S., Europe, and Asia. Tariq Amin, Humane CEO, said the firm was already in talks with American companies including OpenAI, Andreessen Horowitz, and XAI. He said Humane was also looking for a U.S. tech group to become an equity partner in the company's ambitious data center business. Amin declined to name specific potential partners but said, We're in discussions with all of them. Some of them, which you will hear about very soon, are massive names in the data center segment. Humane has already inked deals worth $23 billion across U.S. tech companies including NVIDIA, AMD, Amazon, and Qualcomm. They aim to establish 1.9 gigawatts of data center capacity by 2030 and add another 6.6 .6 gigawatts in the following four years. Amin estimates the build-out will cost around $77 billion at current prices. He said, The world is hungry for capacity. There are two paths you could take. You take it slow, and we are definitely not taking it slow, or you go fast. 
Whoever reaches the end line first, I think, is going to secure a good chunk of the market share. Humane's stated goal is to have 7% of global compute by 2030. The $10 billion venture fund will also immediately put Humane in the mix as one of the larger funds in the space. You might remember back in April, Andreessen Horowitz raised a $20 billion AI investment fund that was one of the largest in the firm's history. So again, all in all, yet another indication of how the Gulf states are positioning and leveraging significant capital to become a player in the global AI sphere. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching, as always. And until next time, peace.